please. <laughs> uh, as we get into pick and ban for game number one, Hanwha are going to move back to our blue side, KT, uh, on the red side for this one. It is once again going to be that Elise ban. Of course, Bono deserving that ban after his performance uh, earlier on in the tournament. And we've got the Misfortune and the Akali being taken off the board here on KT's side. Aurelia has been a mainstay in the ban list and uh, the Nautilus Flex that we were talking about in the draft of game one that of course uh, Kuro played in game two and uh, Tucson played in game one uh, will be taken off the board. So KT, what is the next one in line? The Lucian still available. Might actually just be left through here. Of course, Tempt is actually one of our yep. premier Lucian players. There we go. So this is our first game that Lucian isn't banned. And Cassiopeia is going to be immediately locked in. So, could be an answer, potentially, to that Lucian, because of course Miasma does ruin his day. And note that KT, the last time around on blue side, banned Lucian on blue. So kind of told Hanwha Life, like, hey, we don't really play Lucian, we don't really want to play this pick, but maybe that's part of the reason why Hanwha Life say, we don't have to first pick it. If they want to play it when they're not comfortable, sure. If they... Want to leave it up? Then we'll pick it for tent. Yep. Definitely another option, as it's Varus, Varus is going to put in. Yeah. Varus Tomkitch. It's happened. I'm calling it already. Sir yeah. Thomas. Yeah, I'm just not going to get not going to get excited. This is, of course, KT Rolster. The aim of the game is to not get excited. We're taking an extra 10 seconds now just to find the Tomkitch button. Oh, no. Oh my goodness, it's not going to happen. The really? Rek'Sai is going to be locked in instead. Lahenz jumps onto his Yumi. This is most likely the Yumi Cassiopeia bottom lane, and you saw how quickly Hanwha made up their minds. They know the comp that they want to run. Oh yeah. Now, Kuro could lock away the Lucian here, because I actually think in the hands of Hanwha, it will be way worse. As uh, we're just hovering over some things here. We'll see what Kuro does eventually decide to settle on. Theoretically, you can flex. Uh, the uh, Varus into the mid lane, but it's going to be the Leona. Tucson trying to make up for what was a uh, weird and wacky performance uh, in their debut match here in the Casper Cup that they were able to take. However, Tucson's early game left a little to be desired. And uh, note that the three champions that are here, um, maybe not the Yumi so much, but already Rise and Cassiopeia can be hit by that a Leona ultimate from downtown and don't really have a lot of mobility outside of their own flashes. So I don't mind the pick at all. Can leash onto the bottom lane relatively easily whilst also being good as the game goes along. And yeah, I like all the target bans towards Kuro, the Nautilus coming out now and the Aurelian soul being taken away. No more Nocturne for Tempt coming in here as yep. it's most likely even with Cassiopeia and Rise both picked that the mid laner has still not been picked. That's that's the world that we live in right now in the current meta. Do you want me to tell you what's going to happen the next round of picks? Tell me. KT. Sir Analyst. KT <laughs> going to lock Aatrox. We're going to be sad about it. The immediate answer from QV will be nah. Nah is happening. Really? Yeah, that's what I'm feeling. I don't, I don't that's what I'm feeling in that. my waters. It's the QV nah. I reckon it's coming out. We still have Mordekaiser left available. No, 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 too much magic damage. So they banned the Camille, so the, the Aatrox pick might actually happen. Now that the Camille is banned, maybe go ahead and lock that. I've, I've already told you what's going to happen. Lane. We, don't, we don't need to talk about it. It's Aatrox coming in here, and then the Nar to follow. But you said that the coach told someone not to play Aatrox. Oh, maybe he was listening. <gasps> Four seconds. Renekton. That can also be flexed. All right, I okay, like this Jace. even more. Okay, we got a lot of poke coming down from KT. Yeah. And so on's Jace was extraordinarily good. So we didn't want to see the Aatrox, just expected it. <laughs> Not happening. That's a Quinn. So it's all just out the window. Yeah, fun stuff from Hanwha continues as Haru is going to be jumping onto a Jarvan. I was thinking if any person was going to jump onto the Jarvan in this game, it would be Bono, who is a big fan of the Jarvan. It has been played once, and it did pick up a win. So Haru going to be playing it for the second time here. Lots of magic damage. They add a bunch of engage into this, as well as, again, Quinn, good split pusher. You got Ryze in there to join on up. Can have a similar role to what we've seen from the Camille on the split push, whereas the Orianna going to be locked in here last on the side of Kuro and KT Rolster. 
Yeah, not a lot of tankiness necessarily, unless you uh, count Leona as that, but a lot of poke availability from the Varus and the Jace. And then Kuro there just to try and keep his teammates healthy and happy, moving around pretty quickly with that command dissonance as well. So I like the utility focus of the AD carry. On Hanwha's side though, man, it's all a bit crazy. As Cube, he's opted in for the exhaust, of course, because uh, with the ultimate, you can just travel around so incredibly quickly. Don't need to worry about teleport on the Quinn. But once again, it is Hanwha life with more of a let's avoid KT and win the game around them type yeah. tactic. It didn't work in game one. It barely worked in game two. And let's see whether this split push style is going to get them across the line in game three. Yeah, and note that the rise flex pick Always going to be quite valuable and almost always picked up in the first round of picks before the second band phase, if not banned out. So it does get flexed into the mid lane here by Tempt, who is going to be picking that one up and playing a very different champion to the Nocturne, as will Kuro, by the way. It's very different compared to that Nautilus that he played in game number two. Oh, yeah. Uh, Varus into Cassiopeia, Yumi uh, could be really volatile between both of these two teams. We'll have to find out, guys, as we get into the rift for our final game of the night. I feel like the KT fans are like calm and cool with the way that you no, know. No, the they game, can't. They can't afford the to get excited. Have been, yeah, not they're not. Now. They not are now. really not excited. They're like, yeah, let's go, guys. Yeah, you have to anyway. over-index into not being excited. Whereas then we might have another game life, too. They're feeling the craziness from all the different <laughs> yeah. team comps, and they're just going wacko over on their side. Well, someone has taken the electrocute on the Jace, wanting to go for more of these small trades against the Quinn. Not necessarily one of those matchups that Quinn can really abuse. Does like a lot of these melee matchups that you can really use the vault to create distance whenever they use a gap close. Mm -hmm. uh, something like a Renekton certainly comes to mind, although Ruthless Predator can ruin your day. But, uh, or a hammer jump in from the Jace, but that's, that's true. You really the only thing. You can get burst down and you're very squishy to start. So, you know, if you take a giant shock blast to the face and then four autos, and then he jumps in, it's like, well, the vault is not really getting <laughs> all that much value out of the trade. Yeah, you sort of need to land the blind at the same time, but often after the jump, you can buffer the rest of the abilities so that the trade does work out and so on will get that electrocute proc and probably be finished the trade anyway, so... I'm glad that you brought it up. It might be something that someone can avoid. Let's have to see uh, just how it works out in the laning phase. As our Kuro and Tempt trade some autos. And Lehens back on his famous Yumi. Just prowling some projectiles around. Tucson trying to soak them for his teammate. As Haru making his way in at level 2. Decides against it. Scans around and realizes that he wasn't actually spotted. Kuro just with... Heads up play. As are, there's the flash, but flash flag and drag ain't a flag drag flash. That's not going to work out. Meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map, Lava taking a bit of damage. Poison now ticking onto Tucson. Health bar of a Leona, very important to be able to threaten anything. As our Lehens detaches. A few changes to Yumi recently. I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. Feels like a lot of uh, normalization. Yeah. Not exactly like huge buffs or it's anything like, like that. The Q lasts for a shorter amount of time. It also doesn't slow, but I, I think it has a smaller AP ratio on top of that. So you can't just build Majize and be like this ridiculous. Yeah, she's cat. not based on her amount of damage anymore. Yeah, not anymore. Not really based all on that Q. She does a bit more healing, I believe. Yeah, and zoomies are bit, really obnoxious. A bit more speed on top of that zoomies. But either way, as you mentioned, definitely taking a lot of the power out of the crazy OP ability and putting some power into just normalizing her as a support. So I feel like overall, uh, definitely a good change. You'll see her every once in a while. You're not going to see her like always perma ban pick as we have in the past. Yeah, well, that's a cleanse already on cooldown here. Bottom side of the map, Lava down to 300 health. Tucson has his eye in and now Bono, he smells blood in the water. The land shark herself, Rek'Sai moving her way down. Doesn't have a lot of extra damage considering a dive, but this could be real bad. The flash is going to be traded and KT will take that. Oh man. 
This is super aggressive. I think if that had have landed, Tusum may have just straight up died definitely anyway. Yeah. Almost like they were going for the trade. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, there was a wave pushing in. So if you trade one for one, it's not half bad. You you get the Cassiopeia behind, which is also, also uh, always nice. But not quite able to make it happen. It was a extremely fast reaction time out of Lava. Almost like he yeah. was expecting it. You know, the second the Leona flashed, he just immediately was out of there. And that kind of makes me feel like he had his finger on the flash button, just waiting for some kind of engage. Maybe it was something about the way the Leona was pathing or moving. But either way, it was a very nice reaction. As Haru, thinking about a play into the bottom side, noticing that Leona isn't here, so he knows that the Varus is not going to get in position, so it just helps to push. Speaking of in position, Bono is down here. We'll be able to move through, and you can tunnel over into that brush. Not going to, just going to protect his bottom lane as that minion wave is in a decent position. But you can see Haru was just trying to get themselves a cheat and recall, as our friend LS would say. And they're going to successfully do that while aiming in Tus and try to push this one towards the turret. Yeah, no more TP for Lava, as we have seen the Cassiopeias uh, picking up that TP just to stick around in lane and get that necessary farm. But against Leona, uh, if you want to die, you'll take TP. Uh, you do need that cleanse just to make sure you're living. But does mean that aiming is going to get ahead when it does come to the bottom lane and the farm, as at least they were able to uh, stop the wave from crashing until they just barely got there. So Cassiopeia not going to get too far behind, but still a nice little play as Tucson thinking about a rotation here to the mid lane. Yeah, finds himself a control ward though. So nothing doing there as far as gank attempts. Still going to wait around in the area as pings are out onto exactly where the Rek'Sai is as Tempt moves on in. And uh, Tucson wanted to be able to grab that one. He's going to be able to do so with the minion dematerializer. So has himself a bit of extra gold there with his visit to the mid lane. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we've seen Infernal Drake in, or Infernal Rift in every single game. Yeah, as, so far this series, definitely. Maybe even in... Uh, I think in, the, in all series today. Oh, wow. Jeepers. I think we've had four games in a row. <laughs> That's a lot of Infernal Rift. We're not going to get it this time. Yeah, Just, because uh, I, I don't remember happening. any other rifts unless there was... Maybe game two of the first series where it just ended so no, no, fast. No, no, uh, it was it was in. Um, oh, that was game the Zoe two, game. That was the Zoe yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Well, this is going to be the first time where we don't get that because it is Infernal Drake first, and so. I, I hope it's the ocean one. I think it's the prettiest. Yeah. Get a lot of foliage. That yeah. is for sure. Loads of foliage. I like the Mountain Drake one, actually. Yeah, I, I actually, I'm predicting a Mountain Soul this game. Okay. That, that's, uh, that's my prediction. Absolutely no way that we can <laughs> tell. <laughs> You're it just feeling entirely this time RNG, around. But that's, yeah, it's how I'm feeling. You notice the way the trade goes. Kiva actually opens up with the Vault as they push away from the minions here and then tried to land that blind, but the acceleration gate gives that extra bit of movement speed, so Soan was able to dodge out of that and look for extra trading after, but Kive was like, nope, I know this is when it's my time not to trade, and did exactly that, not trade, backed away. And so, so far, the top lane has just been going very even in terms of CS. It's been pushing back and forth. The junglers haven't visited the top lane at all. They've just been mostly in the mid and bottom sides as there is a lot more CC in those lanes. Yeah, a little bit of a difference here with uh, what the goals are for these top laners as well. QV, of course, wanting to split push, as has been Harma Life's way so far. This tournament is what it feels like. So on trying to group and siege a little bit more as Bono will find Tempt. Tremorsense spotted him coming over there as uh, the room prison comes down. Tempt just loses half of his health bar, but will survive. We'll eat through that refillable potion before picking up his blue buff. Bono comes in, spots out everything that's going on here, and Tucson going to make his way around Ooh. as well. Fails to steal that one away, and in fact, Temp does lock it down. Yeah. Which is important. It's really big. Actually tried to deny a lot of that, and also catch the riser rotating on the blue timer. So it was, it was a great setup play from Bono. Unfortunately, nothing really went right, as they didn't even get the flash out of the rise in all of the trading that happened. Tucson wasn't level six, so he didn't follow up there on to attempt to try to force a flash. The one thing that does happen is that Tucson 
rotates up here, so they're able to take down Shelly extremely early. So KT able to get an early objective here. No Drakes have been taken just yet, so that's going to be the first one taken down here by either team. We'll have to wait and see exactly where they do send Shelly in one of these lanes. Yeah, Shelly and Shirley actually are probably both going to be coming out here this game, especially the spawn of Shirley. That's guaranteed. As uh, the Infernal Drake hasn't been considered by either side just yet. And so KT having taken Shelly down, uh, an opportunity for them to just move down towards the bottom side of the map as well, harm one not. Uh, early enough to be able to get any sort of trade of those objectives. So KT just taking everything that they want at this stage. Their lead, not gigantic, but uh, there's the final chapter. <laughs> and Aiming says, I'm getting the heck out of here. KT will move on into this mid lane, and there's the flash forward. The ultimate's coming out from the supports, but it's working out way better for Tucson. Thus far as Haru goes down low. There's the Chains of Corruption are going to stun him up, but it's a one-for-one -one trade in the end. Good answering kill out from Hanwha Life. You know, when Haru jumped in there with the Cataclysm, I started shaking my head. I'm like, uh-oh, you went too far. Tempt was dead. He flashed because of being uh, caught in the river earlier on. So it was going to be a set play where I thought KT were just going to get the kill and move in to take the Infernal Drake. But that is not what happened at all, as they were sufficiently able to burst down um, the Rek'Sai here, because the Rek'Sai at this point in the game is extremely squishy. So just the Cataclysm and a bit of extra Cassiopeia damage were all that they needed to get uh, the extra kill onto Rek'Sai. So you see here, the Rise is definitely dead. But the question is, can they trade back? And smartly, uh, they were able to in a spot where I thought they absolutely were not going to be able to get a kill. They take out the Jungler as well, which means that no Infernal Drake chance comes in. And we still have Infernal Drake up here at 10 and a half minutes. Yep. Extra vision now available for KT. So in theory, they have control of the area and a little bit of extra gold after that is all said and done. But the fact that the Casio picked up a kill is actually really important. Zoomies immediately gives Lava all of his health back. And uh, Bono says that looks like a frustrating gank to make work. I'm just going to try and take myself down a dragon. Haru set up here in position. You can see vision everywhere. We'll know exactly where Haru is. And even if he flag and drags over, that's going to be on cooldown for him to be able to get into the Drake Pit. I'm not actually sure about the state of the Blast Cone, but it is not there now. So no chance for that one to be stolen away. It's taking a while for Bono. I have a feeling that may have uh, reset or something like that. But there's uh, all of the ultimates coming through. Aiming has absolutely no idea what he wants here. And we'll just move on up. <laughs> They spotted Haru, I believe. Imagine two ultimates being countered by one Miasma. Yeah. <laughs> well, Amy, it doesn't even counter Amy. He doesn't have any mobility yeah. nor flash like, nope, available. I'm not stepping just on like, that thing. I'm spinning. I'm spin <laughs> See, look at all of the movement I have. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that didn't do anything. I, I think you must. You, you definitely were right that they had to have seen Haru because the second something, some, you know, action occurred where they were just like, nope, 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 and everybody yeah. just wanted to get out of there. And I don't think it was only the Miasma. But either way, a uh, bunch of ultimates do come out of there. But at the end of the day, I mean, they're distracting the bottom lane. You know, they're keeping Haru down there in case of a play. And Bono is able to essentially single-handedly pick up the Infernal Drake. So it's definitely still worth for KT in the tree. Yep, and also the Ariana is continuing to, to crush that lane as well. Not necessarily on the CS, but almost has two plates out of the mid lane turret. His Super Soaker now completed as well. The GLP as uh, Tucson Moby booting his way towards uh, an empty dragon pit as Bono sets himself up a Rift Herald and Shelly is going to come beat down on a turret as soon as she possibly can. Haru makes his way in, Cubase there. Haru stopwatches the shockwave, but I don't think he can stop way stopwatch his life ending in his own cataclysm. Lava and Lehens should at least get themselves a couple of plates here down towards the bottom side is aiming. Will he teleport is the question. There is one towards the back here. Double We've teleport. got the double teleports coming in exactly. Kuro going to join them as well. He has his ghost. The teleport now on cooldown as there's no vision in this area, but he turns around at the right time. The Lost Chapter is going to be there. The flash over, the Miasma doing work, and Lehens' Yumi is just keeping Lava alive. He is a monster on this Casio. You got to know that it was Lehens that was calling for that one. Three on two, no problem. We have a Yumi, and we have a flash and a dream. They knew that they were going to be in that brush. Another trade up here on the top side, though. Yeah, a bit of extra damage there coming out as well as uh, Soan eventually gets the boot back with the hammer. 
It's Bono, spots, tempt, tremor sense, of course, gives him that information. It was just hilarious that that fight happened, and because that brush now curves, everything missed before the fight started. Yeah. And that was all that uh, Lahens and Lava needed to just say, hey, we can turn this one around. After Chain's Corruption went by, the Piercing Arrow went wide, and just everything was missing, so they didn't have that burst damage to win the fight to begin with. Well, Harrier does spot out Bono and Kuro, I believe, but it's still going to be the blue buff getting handed over and stolen, given to the Orianna. But the Orianna, some blushes need to be spared here. Look at this. As Chains of Corruption go wide, and yeah, the little just Everything size. misses, like, even the distance. It's like, God, can you spend anything else to miss this Cassiopeia? That could be in the corner there, guys. You should at least consider that. And so all the burst damage from both the Varus and the Oriana was, Oriana was immediately gone. And I feel like waiting were able for to trade it back. Like putting the Oriana ball in the brush might have been a good first move. Yeah. Um, but, Instead you know, of rushing. hindsight is twenty twenty. As uh, aiming is at least still keeping up in farm. Has himself Blade of the Ruin King completed. And uh, Soan has got himself the Ghost Blade, which is interesting. Haven't seen that one too much when it comes to choices of lethality, but wants to have that extra movement speed to try and contend with uh, Cuvee. He's now aiming, going to get jumped on, but there's the ultimate used defensively from Tucson. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, Tucson is going to get taken down, but the rest of KT will survive. Their towers may not be so lucky. Quinn going down to the bottom side for a bit of a roam to try to make the extra damage happen. She's like, no, I'm kind of done with this lane. And you mentioned it even in the draft. That's kind of what Hanwha Life's draft will eventually do once we do uh, get down to it. As they're going to catch Kuro here again. Yeah, there's the flash. Shockwave is going to land, but immediately the answer. Kuro survives for so damn long, and they answer it with a one for one. Bono trying to escape with the flag and drag, not going to be doing any dragging at this stage. And Haru's just going to get out. He takes his little cat and a book and makes his exit as Tucson going to pick up some extra experience here in the mid lane. Not losing out on too much. It's a trade of turrets in the end, but still a few extra kills go over to Hanwa. They're unable to rest themselves any sort of gold advantage as RKT still certainly having a monopoly there and their vision moving towards the bottom side of the map is great, but not great enough as Tucson going to get knocked up. That's some really cute buffering of the Zenith Blade, but now teleports come in. The stopwatch available. Hunt Lava in trouble. A few extra autos. That's going to do it. The Varus locks down the kill. Tucson survives almost forever and will cause the death of Haro as well as now Lahans <laughs> just trying to float his way away from aiming. Cuve walks over a ward, and that means that aiming's just going to disengage and lets the little cat live. Well, perhaps had the Petrifying Gaze landed and they were able to burst down the Leona, then and only then could things have gone well and they could have turned immediately onto the Varus and KT couldn't have turned that one around. But once the Leona survived for just two, three seconds long enough, or too long, I should say, that was all that KT needed to get the Varus in position. Nobody was looking at him. He did an insane amount of damage to Lava. Picked up the 600 gold bounty from oh, wow. Lava as well, who was 3-0 and zero before that fight. So it becomes even more uh, disastrous the more you go down the list of everything that was given over. Another turret given over to the Jace in the bottom side as well. And KT, they're really opening up this lead because they have 2,000 gold ahead and they have two Drakes already. Oh, man, and it was three people waiting here. That Petrifying Gaze was actually really close to getting a stun. If she dies immediately, you're like, okay, this is fine. But then TP comes in once KT realized they're able to turn it around. And it's just everything just desperately trying to kill the Leona ends up not being worth it as the extra gold even goes over to the Varus. Yeah, bad to worse. Absolutely. Shirley going to be available for another two minutes as uh, KT have an option to try and take her. Looks like Haru is poking his head around this area as well and is going to start this one up. Bono sweeps his way in, and aiming is waiting in the wings as well. Kuro can make that rotation over as Tucson and so on. In through the back. This should be a team fight as Cube waiting. Orb is going to land. No dissonance invested just yet. No shockwave also, which is the important part. Shock blasts are in. The piercing arrows are going to be down as here's the engage. Last chapter, last chapter, sorry, is going to be read out, but it is to his own teammate. 
One for one trade sh so far, but there's the shockwave. Dissonus completes it, and Lehens is now up a creek without a paddle. Realm Warp to get Tempt the hell out of there, and that last Q is not going to be enough. So Shirley is going to join her sister over on KT's side. Yeah, you could see what they were trying to set up there with the one pick and the burst, and they do that, but then Lava's like, yeah, I'm fine in this brush. There's a control ward and a ball in the brush. You <laughs> cannot stand in the brush. He goes in there, and he dies immediately to the shockwave and the extra burst damage, and the two kills because you get the bonus cat on top of the Cassiopeia are all that KT needed to take down the, uh, the a bunch of the kills and to also get in there and pick up that turret. So just bad going to worse again, it looks like here for the side of Hanwha Life. But if game two taught us anything, anything can happen from here. <laughs> this is certainly looking like KT in a very favorable position though, losing just Tucson after he's already got off all of his CC. Doesn't really bother them and they're able to collapse in. Felt like a massive disconnect though, like you were saying, just exclaiming at the screen there with the split between Hanwha uh, their team members seemed like some wanted to take down the Rift Herald, others wanted to try and fight four versus two. It was just, uh, just a bit of a disaster. Yeah. I understand his thought process. If you play a lot of Cassiopeia, especially if you play it bot with the Yumi on your back the entire time, you are one of the best champions at like hiding in a brush and doing some insane burst damage with not only your ult, but just landing that poison without people seeing you. Looks like he's going to get away from that gank, but how about this one in yeah, the bottom This is what lane. happens when you can't teleport alongside your um, your teammates anymore. You just get one that's really, really fast, and it doesn't seem to matter. However, Bono is down here. There's the last chapter. Is it going to be enough, though? The Zoomies is a lot of healing, but there are five people, and that is two kills, and they both go to aiming. KT, 5,000 is the gold lead as Tempt continues to do what Tempt loves this series, which is be by himself in a lane, trying to take turrets, but KT are just doing it better. Yeah, be able to split push all day long, but you have to recognize not only how many teleports the enemy team has, but also where they are on the map. If you're gonna go for that play, you have to know that their TP is up and can turn that into a 2v2 immediately. And then also, they were just ganking the Cassiopeia in the mid lane, so they're going to be able to rotate down to the bottom side really quickly. And it feels like Hanwha Life kind of clutching at straws with what they have in their composition, which is how a lot of this series has felt for them, actually. Yeah. They, they build this wonky comp and they're like, this is what we must do. This is the craziness that we, the difficult play that we have to pull off in order to pull this like game back. they're purposefully like outplaying themselves. Yeah, exactly. And that's what these difficult compositions can make you do at times. And that's exactly what we've been seeing more so in this game than any other game, although we saw it a lot in game number one as well. As another I've rotation's seen, coming down here. Before. Thankfully, Haru in position to try and defend. And therefore, Cuve and Lehens are going to be all right. They spot out aiming, rotating over, but Tempt and Lava not wanting to go aggressive. They know that Chains of Corruption are going to be there. Aiming can answer anyone moving forward and has the range advantage against both of these champions. Why we've seen so much Varus is it is going to be Cloud Rift, so we've got a few extra um, movement zones, as you can see. Pretty swirly in that Dragon Pit, and also uh, around these circles. Yeah. Sort of forming circles around the imaginary uh, Skana Spires, if you think about it. Yeah. And uh, I'm trying to think about who that would favor here, the Cloud Rift. I feel like both teams really like Maybe to pounce. Hanwha? They really like to pounce on you really quickly. I mean, even with Le yeah. Leona and Rek'Sai, you want to get in range and like try to get on top of them. Perhaps just on an, like a basic level, the composition of Hama would be better for it. But I feel like in this position, it kind of favors whichever team is ahead. You know, although there is a, a nice amount of disengage in the side of Hanwha Life, so I'm not sure that the speed is going to help all too much for KT. Although once that just base movement speed comes in from the Cloud Soul, plus the extra that you get from using your ultimate, that's going to be quite nice for a lot of the players, especially Leona. Just everything kind of yeah. that has to do with Cloud Drake is great for Leona. So got to imagine that Tucson's happy with the way the Drakes have gone so far. Oh, Cubate, just going to use that uh, 
Ultimate there, Harrier spots out Tucson as well. He's been well scoped on his way towards this bottom side attempted gank. And so uh, the double backs are going to come in for both the Quinn and uh, the Yumi. As double Seraph's embrace completed. That's so many tears that he managed to get so yeah. far this game. <laughs> Amalife are certainly crying right now in this mm -hmm. game from behind. Desperately looking for a way back into this one. And as we've seen so far in the series, you'd have to imagine that Hanwha Life's way back in would be split pushing. But as I say that, we do have the Rise backing from a place up in the top lane. Perhaps that's just because they lack vision in the red side jungle and they don't want to go on like a suicide mission in terms of the split pushing. Whereas Ryze is more of like a, a friendly guy who joins in. But now they're going to be forced to respond because the Baron is going down. Yep. We've got three Drakes now on the side of KT as well. So that's going to help buff them up as Kuro finds a lonely member of, La of Lava, of uh, Hamwa Life, of course. Is now Tucson going to dive on forward? They are pulling off as the final chapter comes in. So on, going down very, very low. And there's the Cataclysm to try and take him out. But I think Mountain Drake even helping him out there. But not going to be enough for the Orianna is aiming now, turning. Not going to survive. And Hamwa Life, huh? they do enough. Realm Warp comes forward. Bono gets one of his knock ups and is going to be able to flash his <laughs> way out of there. With and the now, zoomies. Oh my god, he's zooming extraordinarily quickly. Is now so on trying to turn this one around, but is gonna nail that dive. And we'll jump up into is the sky done? yet again. Bono <laughs> trying to find more, but there it is. The strike comes through. Oh my god, the vault back. And Cube has made the mistakes before, but this time it's worked out. And in the meantime, guys, <laughs> it's a Baron being taken down. Bono survives for as long as he can, but now his back is even going to be staggered in the Death Realm. Sorry, Death Chamber for another 35 seconds. The rest of his team now coming back up, and the Baron is going to fall. So we mentioned that it felt like KT had found their rhythm in this game, and we also mentioned that anything can happen in this series. <laughs> Anything can happen in the series, especially now that the Baron has been taken by Hummel Life. So you're thinking in the beginning of this replay, Lava's just going to get burst down and probably just immediately die. But no, very importantly, he stays alive. Now, KT's tanking the Baron. They don't have the most tanky members. And Tucson goes in phase first, whereas the backline is just taking so much residual damage from not only the Rise, but also Lava, who stays alive the entire time and is poisoning everybody. They can't make it by the Miasma, and it's just too much to join Tucson in the fight. And they have like a lot of poke damage and, and burst potential, but the Shockwave was already used. There was no real follow-up after Tucson went in, and because Lava stayed alive, they were able to essentially chip away at them alongside the Baron that they were tanking. Again, there's no real tank on the side of KT outside of Tucson, who is outside the pit. So everybody's taking a crazy amount of damage. And that's all you need for scaling champions like Ryze and Cassiopeia to just pounce upon you. Nobody was even looking at Cuve, but he was also chipping away at the front line. And we all saw what he was able to do at the end there with the zoomies with the help from Lahen. So you really just have to be insanely careful against this comp as well. We'll yep. see what Temp can do. Yeah, Chains of Corruption come in. That's going to be the Shockwave, but the Empowered Q enough to get rid of the Rise. I thought maybe moving the Rise closer to the Varus could be a problem, but certainly wasn't. Just enough damage available, and there's the Teleport immediately towards the mid lane. And Kuro is going to join back up to try and gather the Dragon Soul in the form of this Cloud Drake that has just spawned. Four versus five. Lava has a lot of damage potential, so takes a fair bit from that Shock Blast. Is now Haru going to be spotted out? That's why the Tremor Sense is so valuable immediately. The Gargoyle Stone Plate is procced, but he won't have that available for any attempted steal. But the Zoomies are going to help bring his health back up again. There's the Flash Cataclysm. Multiple members in here as Lava going to throw down the Petrifying Gaze, but doesn't do enough. I was expecting so much more, and the knockup coming out from Bono is going to be good, but look at these Zoomies dashing around this fight, and now Cube oh. once again joined with aiming. The double kill comes forward, and now Bono versus Lahens. Bono running away because the Realm Warp comes on forward, and now Tempt is going to be able to grab that kill. Fresh from the Death Chamber, moves on down, and will be able to deny the Dragon Soul. Oh, what an insane fight that was. It looked like Hanwha were just kind of throwing caution to the wind and joining, you know, the, the Death Realm. They just wanted to hop on in, but Haru actually was able to trap everybody and keep everybody around 
and they kept the fight alive for long enough for Tempt to actually TP back in. No Shockwave, keep in mind, guys, so no burst damage there. Haru does a good job of getting the Cataclysm down, and then everybody's in the Miasma. And then just everybody stays alive for just way, way too long. The Zonia's there on the side of Lava, who's also able to pick up a bunch, or rather a kill at the end. And again, just the chip damage that comes out of the auto attacks from the Quinn, plus everybody standing on the Miasma and all the poison from the side of the Cassiopeia. It looks like a crazy fight to take, but especially they knew even if it went somewhat even, Tempt would eventually follow up with a TP into the back of the fight. Well, I think I've seen this one before. Interrupts the tunnel journey. And uh, Cube is going to be able to lock that, that kill down. Man, this uh, this bird and a cat are certainly best friends. It's very different to real life. <laughs> the cat is very happy to sit on the bird's back. Maybe she's just uh, kind of made a, the bird do what she wants at this like point. There's like a food chain issue going on here because it feels like, you know, the cat and the bird are best friends and then the snake and the cat we're also like yeah. relatively close and it's like we've got a food chain represented here snakes probably cats and yeah. cats eat if birds given the opportunity and, oh man if they're big enough yeah i wonder how birds and snakes get along probably snakes eat those too yes yeah, so uh, it, do it doesn't it doesn't work as a trinity no but uh yeah, I mean, in the early game, it's a strong lane with Yumi and Cassiopeia. And then late game, nobody's getting away from you. And the Quinn no. eventually becomes this monstrous split pusher once she gets three, four, five items, as we're seeing here. And how are you going to really catch her unless you interrupt that right there? It's even more movement speed as well, because the zoomies, of course, do yeah. speed you up. And then you have all of that uh, utility with the Harrier on your W. So, uh, yeah. Feels like uh, Lahans is having a pretty good time so far. <laughs> 10 stacks on his Dark Seal as well. 17 out of 17 kill participation. I think we know who's getting the MVP for this Look one if our winners are. There's the final chapter, but not able to get the snare down on Zabono, who flashes to get himself out. Yeah, at but the I'd end of the petrified. day. You're just, you're just running in, you're not using anything really, and you're forcing a flash and a jungler to back. It's a, it's a great move to just get in there in an awesome trade for Hanwha Life, who are absolutely just going to keep those two together for the remainder of the late game. They didn't get very much done with that Baron buff, though. Baron up again in another 30 seconds. As Tucson can cone over if he would like to. You can see KT thinking about doing a sneaky play, jumping over the wall to try and lock down that Baron, but not going to do so. Vision now being set up here on Hanwa's side. As this ward is being denied. Bono is over there, but they just dive on in. Aiming has to flash immediately out. Looked like he was AFK for a second there as the shockwave goes completely wide. Oh no! You can't afford a hula hoop in this fight as the Varus, the Orianna, both of them are dead. So on. The last remaining bit of damage as Tucson is being chased out of this one. Another Baron should go over to Hamwar, and it feels like this game has officially turned. You guys have to note that KT were not ready to fight at all, and Hanwa Life called their bluff so hard. They're like, oh, they're probably just going to sit in that brush, aren't they? Jace wasn't even there for 75% of that fight. He got there right at the end after the Shockwave missed. And so they were missing so much of the damage coming out from Zoan, who really could have turned the tides there. But it was just calling them their bluff and saying, they're almost definitely in the brush. Haru, just go in. And if they are in there, Engage. It doesn't matter if you die. You know, you'll just do your job based on an engage. And they got a bonus 5v4 on top of it. And you'll see that oh, here in this replay. That ward spotted them out as well. My God. Yeah. That's that's really frustrating. Watch when Jace comes in from the top. He's like, hey, guys, what's go? Oh, yeah. my team's dead. Bit of a whoopsie. The fact that the shockwave was aimed on the hens as well and actually didn't go off in time to deny the you and me. This is all about Lahens. This whole game <laughs> is revolving around this one stray cat that KT can't seem to understand the power of. Yeah, it, do, it does feel like that from time to time as Lahens on Griffin kind of felt like he was overshadowed at times. You know, we, we said, hey, he's got, some, Yumi. he's got some unique picks. And yes, you are right. The Yumi was the one pick where we were like, by God, this guy is a god in, in his own right. And yeah, he does that here once again on another team, and I feel like he shows a bit more individuality even just overall yeah. on, on a new team. 
uh, not only on the Yumi. So playing a great part so far is Lahens. And that is going to deny the Dragon Soul for another five minutes as the Cloud Drake will be picked up here by Hanwha Life. And KT will not be able to pick up. And they are going for the Baron push. Yep, the Siege works out relatively well, but Tempt's going to Realm Warp right on in here. Two-man Shockwave this time. Definitely better news, and Tempt is going to get locked down. The Zonya's going to be utilized as Haru dives on top of Aiming, who's just trying to stand there and turret, but he can't do it as well as the Hanwha Life players, as Kuro survives for a while, but eventually will be taken out, and Hanwha should be able to push through with this Baron buff and win the series in Game 3. Absolutely, they will. It's going to take 34 minutes, and it was just one or two team fights that went a bit too long for the side here of KT. They weren't able to push in with their composition, and eventually, if we get a replay of Cassiopeia's damage in that last fight, you <laughs> yeah. guys will just be holding your heads like, what? Is that even legal? As she was just... Everybody was focusing on killing Tempt. That Lava just went into the back line 